Huh, okay, so let's talk about Far Cut 10.4.9, the update. I will not talk about all the workflow um, updates, um, lots of videos about that. What I tested is eGPU support, of course, and how render speed is, uh, well, changed, uh, improved. Um, and, well, nothing changed really. So I did all kinds of tests. With the old version again, with the same projects, even with Prusax again, then I updated to 10.4.9 and did the same tests. And then actually I did update to Big Sure Beta, I think four or six, no, five, five. Um, and did all the tests again with only uh, the newer version of Final Cut 10, not the older version because basically I did not see any changes at all. So yeah, I, with 4.8, the usual suspect, the project I always test with has one minute and 55 seconds export time. With 10.4.9, I got one minute and 50 for maybe one second, but that could also be margin of error. So basically it's the same time. Just a reminder, I don't have the 5700 XT right now. I only had that for a test and so I couldn't retest that. Maybe I will buy another card again. I'm not quite sure yet but usually it was slower like two minutes and four seconds so like 10 seconds slower but what i also tested with the new version of 10.4.9 from final cut 10 is i exported or copied the test timeline to a new library and put that on an ssd and actually from one minute and 54 seconds export time just by copying it or having that library on a fast SSD instead of an RAID 0 two drives, which is like 250 to 300 megabytes a second. Uh, read write, I have it on a SSD that is uh, like 750, 820 megabytes a second. Read write. I got the export time to one minute and 35. So this is like 20 seconds. So for a big project, I think that makes a difference. But other than that, the new Final Cut 10 doesn't improve anything in terms of export time. So no real updates in terms of GPU support, at least for the Radeon 7. So the Radeon 7 is not really on the official list, I think. So who knows, um, let me know in the comments uh, if you want uh, the Radeon 5700 XT again. Only problem is uh, I don't really uh, want to buy that again. Maybe you should donate, <laughs> whatever. We will see at some point when Big Shore is out officially and maybe if um, Final Cut 10 point five comes out i do the test so yeah but what i also tested is uh, like i said is the Prus x and it's nine seconds no matter what system and even all the others um yeah they they all get nine seconds so i think this test is not really up to date it's fast nine seconds that's the minimum i think but what i also tested is with the update of compressor if something changed in terms of what is used gpu eGPU, cpu and again when you send your project file from final cut to compressor with the send to option yeah on the mac mini it's strange it uses the internal cpu i think to use quick sync or whatever 
I, I'm not quite sure. It, it's not optimal. It takes 24 minutes and 55 seconds to export a YouTube 1080p H.264 file. Uh, that's the presets and compressor. I also tested it if it's pre-rendered, doesn't matter. So if the timeline is pre-rendered, it doesn't use the ProRes files or whatever, it does render it again. So also 24 minutes and 50 seconds. So when you directly export with that preset in Final Cut 10, it takes five minutes and six seconds, a little bit better. Doesn't really matter if you pre-rendered it, H.264 will be re-rendered again. So even with that, it's five minutes and four seconds. So if you have a pre-rendered timeline, so your project is edited and it did a render again, it's all good. And you export a master file, ProRes LT for example, ProRes HQ, whatever you set your timeline to or your project. It takes 21 seconds for that project to export that ProRes file. And then if you put that ProRes file into compressor and export an H.264, it takes 40 seconds. So, um, I mean, that's like one minute of exporting with a pre-rendered timeline for that project in uh, relation to 24 minutes. So, uh, come on. Yeah, no, not quite sure what's going on here. And if you use handbrake with the YouTube preset, it takes two minutes. So yeah, it takes longer, but I think with handbrake, you get the better quality, more efficient, better rendering, better encoding, whatever. So uh, yeah, I think uh, it's it, it's worth the time. Yeah, so that's uh, that's basically it. So uh, Compressor still does odd things uh, in terms of not using the eGPU or the correct GPU. Even if it uh, would use the CPU, it would perform better, as you can see on the other numbers. And um, yeah, that that's still not a really good option. Always, always export a ProRes master file out of Final Cut 10 and then use compressor, media encoder, handbrake, whatever to compress your YouTube version. It's faster anyway, so. But in terms of um, GPU performance or eGPU performance, it's the same, nothing changed. Um, so yeah, the question is if the uh, Radeon RX 5700 XT or even the 5600 XT will perform better I don't have the card. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see and maybe even subscribe and like this video so this helps out this channel. I can make a bit more money no. <laughs> and buy this card again because it's like 400 euros and I'm not quite sure if I uh, want one. No. Anyways. So otherwise, I'm quite happy with the update. Everything works fine, solid, smooth, no crashes, no plug-in issues, um, no footage or codec issues. I heard some people have some issues. I use it with FS7, um, even uh, A7S III footage, uh, A7R Mark III like this, A5100, Phantom IV, um, all kinds of footage and all works fine. Rendering, exporting, all good, um, the same as before. And even on Big Shop, Beta, Mac OS, uh, all good. So everything works smooth there. All the apps I have, plugins I use, all good. So I'm, I'm happy. And for me, the biggest update or change they put in, in the latest Fun Card version is Finally, you can close projects or timelines that you don't need. Sometimes if you work on different stuff all the time and uh, have different versions, the um, project overview switch thingy uh, gets messy. So finally, I can close all the projects I don't need and have a little bit more control over that. That's awesome. So now the only thing that I really want to have is having big, bigger thumbnails on my um, 
screen here, uh, this one. I want bigger thumbnails. Sometimes it's hard on the ultra wide screen with my eyesight um, to see what's going on, especially if I skim or scrub through my footage. That will be awesome. Anyways, that's it. So the next video will be about uh, Sigma MC11 with uh, the Sigma lenses, if the video autofocus works and how the Viltrox EF full frame adapter works in relation to this and uh, how this ends up. You will see in the next video, maybe in a few days. So stay tuned for that. That's it. Back to work. Goodbye. Good night. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, by the way, this was all shot on the 35 2.0 with the Viltrox Speed Booster. The autofocus makes noise. I hope it didn't end up to be too loud. We will see. Autofocus tracking seems to work fine though. Anyways, uh, by the way, you can click also on those two videos here, if you like. That's it. Tschüss.